Welcome to Parent Parliament. This is Matangi, and we have with us Priya Darshini, who is working as an IELTS trainer with U Faber EduTech. She is also a holistic health professional, sending distance healing to patients suffering from physical and mental issues. She believes in doing her bit selflessly. Uh, to that effect, she is a social worker at an NGO called uh, Being Social. Ek nayi shuruwa. Welcome to today's session, Priya Darshini. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Matangi. So you have a lot going on there. You're a language trainer, plus you know you are. You're also into uh, healing people. So how's the yeah. journey been so far? Uh, it has been so uh, interesting and quite a lot of learning for me as well. So I would like to tell you, it feels. Uh, I mean, I feel so so much satisfied to serve the other people, uh, to be a medium in their growth, in helping them in healing from various kinds of ailments, helping them to rediscover themselves. So, uh, directly or indirectly, this journey has helped me a lot in my growth. I am surely looking forward to continue with this and even more to contribute towards the society, may it be in terms of the social service or as far as my profession goes. So, so interestingly, both both of it that you chosen being a teacher to uh, being a healer everything actually works towards the mental and the uh, educational and physical uh, progress of a person so they absolutely both these professions have a lot in common <laughs> Yes, yes, absolutely. Because uh, what happens is, uh, as a trainer, while I am training my student for the exam, I uh, quite often. Uh, get in touch of the blocks that they have for any specific uh, module any specific subject or with respect to their uh, goals so uh, the moment i realize that i first of all uh, highlight that i first of all make them aware that you have that and which is something you really need to work on so here you are who has been trained in all of this so definitely you come with a lot of uh, experience uh, come with a lot of learning yourself uh, yeah. in the related field of healing so not everyone has that intuitive ability or uh, or the experience so uh, how would i mean do, do they even make good teachers i would just recommend a small example if you if you just allow me i had got a student who got transferred from two of his trainers earlier for some or the other reason they had to uh, stop with their job because of the uh, and he uh, had and that way he had a break so it was he lost the continuity in his training so ultimately he got allotted to me and we were working together for around 2 to 3 weeks but again uh, after that much time he was found to be uh, covid positive so ultimately he had to go on leave and as per our uh, policy if a student is going on leave for more than 3 days then ultimately their trainer gets changed but he was the one who insisted that he wants uh, me as his trainer in his uh, future journey that was one of the i, I would say smallest or biggest achievement i don't know but yeah that was the first achievement that and the remark that i received from a student now uh, it's actually the, the one of the major points you brought about about uh, being a good teacher is having that uh, rapport with students and i'm sure uh, teachers would love that because then you know half the job is uh, done because you have a rap and all that you need to do is uh, make yeah. them the expert in what what are they learning but then this is not always possible in a, in a situation where there there's more than five kids in a classroom so i want you to move away from what you're doing right now teaching adults and uh, teaching in a one on one scenario to uh, to uh, you know working with kids when you're working with kids in in a school environment there are around 20 to 40 kids in a classroom so how would you think you can manage the trapo and have that personal connect with students yeah in that case what can be done is uh, apart from the daily teaching activity uh, daily one hour half an hour to one hour i think uh, there should be a dedicated time which for each kid the teacher and the kid one to one interaction uh, the teachers can interact with their parents uh, so that and get the direct uh, update from them as in where how the kid is going about Uh, how, whether the kid is able to do his regular studies, we can probably rate them. So, uh, uh, this particular band, okay, one, two, three, on a scale of five, say, if they are able to do their regular homework and all, uh, without any, without much, uh, you know, guidance, right? Just, uh, just based on the teaching that they have received from their teacher in the classroom. So, so talking uh, about homeworks, uh, yeah, you no, know, that's a very difficult issue again. You know, are homework supposed to be given to children, or if even if they are given are they adding value or is it more of you know the parents doing it or 
you know do, do schools have homework because they want to want to instill that discipline in children that they go back home and do something so what is this according to you, what what value does do homeworks uh, add according to me when a specific uh, topic or chapter is taught to the students in the class so if uh, uh, giving homework to them on that particular chapter is like uh, you, i would say uh, they are studying it a little bit more and uh, they are you know uh, tight uh, this thing they are making it complete i mean uh, learning something uh, grasping and then uh, fully implementing that so fully digest because it would definitely take, just by learning in the class itself so uh, they everyone is volatile i mean every each one of us have a volatile memory right we don't remember things over a long so they have to note it down in the copy they have to practice it that is the way they learn so at least science and all uh, going further they do have some basic conception if the kids learn them definitely they will be able to okay they can be rest assured that they can achieve at least 60% 70% marks or something and, and even more than that i have seen that the trend uh, uh, all throughout my education it was more of an our society is more oriented towards the percentage and score but ideally it should be uh, what kind of knowledge they have gained see because just getting a score uh, i can one can get it in any manner just by mugging up referring to the guides there are so many ways i myself have seen even till the higher 10th and 12th people are referring to the guides they are just they are able to manage to get a passing marks which is not the case really they, there is something beyond that if you are trying to if you have a specific career in your mind so you should be you should uh, you know uh, study the subject from the very basic level you should know the why would a child level. do that see for a child the only understanding is given to him and you have to get 90% in this So why would a child? I mean, child doesn't have so much of foresight, right? Okay, if I get get yeah. this much of grades, uh, you know, this is where. Uh, for for one, when I was growing up, I had no idea why I was studying any subject. And today, when I look back, I'm not even using the subjects that I studied in. in yeah, that happens. <laughs> so that I, is... I question myself: Why did I study all that? What is the necessity? I mean, what 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 is it they could achieve by getting uh, marks? They do it because the parents say, the okay. teachers say. yes that is something see uh, we need to make sure the way they are explained first of all coming to your point why they are forced to learn that particular okay i will use, use the word forced because that is something in their curriculum so they are forced to learn certain subjects especially history geography as i could see right from my childhood most of our friends including me were not so much keen to learn those subjects but since i move back i now realize that it was something which is a uh, if i take history it was something which already my country has gone through the they my country has achieved or all the hardships and struggles that went in the past so it it is about that and since i being uh, a citizen i should know everything leaving apart the marks and everything but i should know uh, about that and that is the result that is the reason i have to study this subject i feel that the way you approach the whole subject yeah and you know the concept and tell the teacher, children so it's it's not about what the children a child has to think it's about yeah. the methodology that we adopt as teachers as and curriculum teachers as as people mm-hmm. who build design uh, you know design lesson plans on how to make it very engaging and interesting for a child yeah that that's need to be changed the methodology uh, implemented for teaching needs to be, it has to be made little bit interesting so since uh, the period the online teaching has started since couple of years uh, i think we can make the most of the technology uh, using proper presentation animation and uh, I, even before that at the beginning just before starting the even chapter number 1 the kids should be given an idea as to why they are uh, for, why, why they are here to re, uh, learn this particular subject and what if they will learn what not if they will not learn it so That's you have written a book uh, so what is the book yeah. about yeah it is uh, my uh, title of my book is soras is a blessing in disguise it is my own autobiography it is about my own journey wherein um, i uh, was affected with a very chronic skin disease uh, right from the period right from the first year of my engineering and it continued uh, even till last year so almost 18 to 20 years and the that particular period wherein you know we have one has so many aspirations that the young age specific young age which we talk about so people have so many dreams and all something so that the peak period the cream period of my life i had to pass through this all these trials and tribulations and it is about but it is ultimately uh, this particular thing in my life which uh, 
uh, changed my journey to become a healer because the pain and suffering that I had been through that prompted me to uh, feel that okay there are thousands of people all over the world who really need uh, healing or who really need a listening uh, ear uh, so that they'll start healing themselves and definitely each of us has a right to become a, lead a healthy life so all these things that's really uh, great I mean, you, you, you've gone through tough times and yeah. uh, you've been resilient and uh, you know come come across to tell your own story so yeah so i'm sure the book will be helpful for others as well now resilience is something which is very important which you know everyone faces uh, challenges in their life be it children be it uh, when they grow up as adults so uh, this is a very important part of uh, of a life skill that i feel should be yeah. incorporated more in in schools right. what do you think exactly. of that and if you if you think it is necessary how do you think we can we can include it in their everyday learnings you've written a whole book on it you know i feel see it can be done in multiple ways first by uh, sharing so apart from this thing we do have uh, uh, certain inspiring stories around us they may be in terms of the scientist or uh, some of them are in, some of them were india and some of them were just outside india and who had who also had gone through such a painful period unlike me it might be another different aspects of their life and how uh, ultimately they achieve their goal and uh, what message they are giving to the whole world if you are able to present the stories maybe it could be in the form of a small small place or uh, something because uh, usually if you put something as a reading activity then obviously kids will get feel it very boring and okay. they will uh, yeah they will mm-hmm. lose the attention so it could be in the form of small small plays uh, because ultimately the message which you are giving is more important rather than time message we can definitely mm-hmm. give, give in small uh, plays and they should be arranged uh, weekly on weekly or biweekly basis so that the kids will be able to understand that yes uh, they need to have something called as patience to learn learn in a real way if they have to really achieve something in their life achieve something really really very big then definitely the quality of resilience patience has to be there all right priyadarshi it was lovely having you today you've been a really inspiration you know the way you've come up and uh, and trying to do the best to not just you know keep the, all the stories to yourself but giving the best mm-hmm. to the world around you and thanks a lot for joining Thanks a lot. I had a nice time with you all. Thanks for giving me the opportunity. Yeah.